Oh, did I start it? I think I, I think I accidentally started it. Hey guys, today we're trying Hyper Rogue as requested by Nexar on Patreon. Um, we're just here, I guess. What? Surrounded by icy land of negative 24 degrees Celsius, which seems like very... Whoa. It looks a bit cooler when you're seeing the real game. I've seen screenshots of this game for a while because I was just kind of aware of its existence and looking at this strange looking game. Uh, it looks a little cooler once you see it move than when you just see the shitty screenshots where the, the graphics obviously don't exactly impress. I think it's like a crazy fractal vector roguelike. An ice diamond. Wow. Look at me. I have an ice diamond. I also marginally at best understand what I'm doing or why. Okay, oh my goodness. <laughs> that effect. Ah, uh, the faster I move, the more disorient- Oh, there's an enemy. An ice wolf. That's not what I thought that was. What if I click on it? Does he die? Do I die? Oh. Alright. Killing an ice wolf increases your treasure spawn. You killed the ice wolf. That was easy, but groups could be dangerous. I, have a, I now have a score of four. You felt that. The icy land became becomes more dangerous with each ice diamond you collect. Oh. That might not be great. Maybe I should leave the ice place then. I'm being chased by a yeti right now, I think. Are those plants growing? Can I kill them? Die! Dormant Ivy and Yeti. You killed the active Ivy. So I think the... I think the... Yeah. I think the colorful ones are active, meaning that they might grow and attack me. So if I see a yellow one nearby, I probably want to attack that one. Otherwise I can kind of... I think I can just keep hacking away. Plant Slayer. That was like the core. You got your first ruby. That's my current logic. I'm not 100% sure if I'm right about it. But I think the ones that are glowy are the ones that are about to move and potentially attack me. Hello, buddy. A giant ape. Okay. The big worry is, does anything have, like, stats? Do I have to worry about things being able to catch me and kill me? because they won't just die in one hit if I get the drop on them. There's like a, a puzzly approach you can take with games like this, assuming they work a certain way. Like if they are going to uh, die in one hit, then you can just sort of outmaneuver them each time, hopefully. Kill the core again. I got a ruby. I have destroyed 102 parts of dead ivy. Ivy root increases treasure spawn. That's probably good. Gotta be careful. I think only one branch of a piece of ivy can, uh, move. Oop, jungle eagle. Ten rubies. I think that only one branch can grow at a time. So as long as you don't trap yourself, you should be safe from being killed by one ivy plant. But, uh, if one of them sneaks up behind you, then you can suddenly have a situation where there's two pieces of ivy that are active within range of you at the same time. And then suddenly you're at risk of actually dying. Hello. Giant ape sneaking up on me. Went a little too fast. Orb of Storms. What does that do? Orb power. Orb of Storms. This is kind of the fun what-the-fuck aspect of this. Like, I played a... I played some sort of, like, ASCII-style roguelike, where everything was made of text. Whoa, did I- is that what my- my storms thing does? Jesus. 
the active ivy would kill you there. But did it just warn me not to do it? Did it just save me? Whoops. I did act I did make the mistake of potentially approaching the ivy. Did I do it right? It seems like the game does stop you from just dying by just eating your inputs. That's probably a setting you can turn off. But then if you just... I, I assume that if you just straight up trap yourself, then it's like, well, you fucked up. That's the end for you. Okay, so now the apes are after me. Now the cr Yep, this is where the crowds get dangerous. Because I'm being approached. Yeah, you gotta move at an angle so the ape can catch up with you. Oh god. This is the fear. Yep. I need to get deeper into the core of one of the other ivies and take it out. Because the, uh... All the surrounding spreading ivy is about to, is about to take me out. There we go. Because you have to make sure... You can't go anywhere where... You can't move into a space that's threatened by another uh, piece because they'll kill you. But you also can't let yourself stand in a position where there's two things threatening you because then you have to you can't kill them both to to save yourself. Like a certain chess aspect to this where it's like you're where you get told like hey you're in check, so you have to deal with the fact that you're in check. Or you, or you get checkmated and you lose. Or, well... Specifically, you're uh, in chess, you're not allowed to... Uh, you're not allowed to end a turn being in check. You have to end the turn by, fit, by escaping being in check. Which is always possible, because if... If, uh, if it wasn't possible to save yourself, then it would be called checkmate and you would have already lost. That's the whole point. <laughs> Here I am explaining chess, apparently. Let's go to this red area. That's new. Welcome to the crossroads. Things are getting pretty dangerous in the vine area. Uh, land of eternal motion. The living cave. The icy land. More eternal motion. Eternal, eternal motion sounds interesting. So we hit we hit the section that's like it's it the crossroads is a fitting name. It's the conjoining of all the different areas. Oh shit! The floor is collapsed. Run! I'm not allowed. All right. So I'm not allowed to ever stop and fight anything. I have to run. This is alarming. Probably don't want to be in here very long. Seeing as how the floor is collapsing around me. This is the alchemist lab. Red slime, blue slime. Wrong color. Do I have to stay on the blue slime? I guess. Like, does mixing color hurt you? I'm not really sure why it says wrong color exactly. Uh, ooh. Killing a blue slime expands the blue zone. The slime beast would kill you there. Ah, but killing a red slime suddenly makes me red. It makes the area that I'm in contact with red. I'm trying not to think too much about how movement works in this game, as far as the exploration goes, because it might break my brain. Would it? Is there anything interesting going on here, actually? They're just interlocking hexagons, right? Like, surely it's just... A flat hexagonal grid that's just being presented in interesting visual style, I think. I don't know. I 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, I may have just killed myself by trapping myself in this little dead end. The alchemist produced magical potions from pools of blue and red slime. You can go through these pools, but you cannot move from a blue pool to a red pool or vice versa. Pools containing items count as colorless, and they change the color of the PC's previous color when the item is picked up. Slime beasts also have to keep their own color, but when they are killed, they explode, destroying them and changing the color of the slime and the slime beasts around them. Variants of the Alchemist Lab are available in the Room Pattern mode, mode after getting a high score of at least 10 Elixir of Life. Does Spacebar wait or anything? Oh, Spacebar orients my screen, apparently. I don't think I can do anything. Is there a waiting feature? Uh, settings? Keyboard. There's a multiplayer and a shmup mode? Uh, I'm just trying to find a list of the controls in this game. This is... There's a lot going on here. Oh god. I'm confused because you would figure if I have if I've lost you would think that the game would just tell me you've lost you can't make any valid op cho you can't make any valid choices that's what I'm trying to figure out like is there a uh, is there a wait feature where I, I spend a turn by not moving? I don't... Uh, the settings are kind of nuts. Help? Move with mouse, numpad, quirds... Or what, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> I have never heard of that referred to as a movement set. I, I assume these are keys you're talking about. Q, W, E, A, D, Z, X, C. I guess if you center your controls on the S on the keyboard, those are all the letters around S. I'm not 100% sure how you determine which one's which, because that's... that's... That's eight buttons, but there's only six directions. Wait by pressing S. Okay. That's what I was trying to do. Game over. <laughs> it's like, how do I... Like, how do you lose in this game? Surely I'm... Surely I've lost. See how it ended. Yeah. There's two of them on each side of me now. Okay, um... Restart. I don't think that was on screen anywhere explaining how to end, right? Maybe you can also do it by clicking your own space? It's 10 degrees Celsius here. Is it getting hotter? Am I just putting out heat like crazy by standing here? Yes. Now it's 40 degrees Celsius in the positive direction. So it looks like I could have, I think I could have also waited by just clicking on my own tile, which I could have figured out, I suppose. So we've, we, yeah, so I was fighting a werewolf or something. No, it was, a, it was an ice wolf. And when I, when I was doing that, we did notice that, yeah, the, uh, some of the tiles around me broke. It seems to be because it's tracking my own temperature around me. Let's quickly grab some ice crystals. So I am curious what this area meant. It said that it was going to get hard here. And I'm like, how hard can this area get, I wonder? Alright, so Ice Wolf, 10 Ice Diamonds. It might just be a matter of the fact that, that so many Ice Wolves will chase after me that I'm in Yeah, that's a lot of enemies.
I'm in Dangia. Uh oh. <laughs> Aha! I've used this wall to my favor. Okay, so yeah, you get swarmed by so many enemies that you're in danger of being attacked by too many of them at once and you have to keep running away, but as you run away, you're more likely to be attacked uh, from behind and then you get surrounded eventually. And then you are deeply fucked. And it looks like the wolves try to avoid entering your, your local space. So I think the yetis try to approach you directly, but the wolves, I think, try to surround you, which is how you would end up losing. I don't know what my temperature means. I guess it, it must just be my the fact that it'll melt stuff around me. Maybe to stop me from standing still for too long and getting... I'm just trying to fight everybody that way. Okay, getting these kills does not give me points. But collecting these items gives me points. I've, I've reached the point where I'm like, I've processed some amount of how the game works. So now I'm wondering what my goal is a little bit. Because as you proceed forward, you're like, hang on a minute. What is my actual goal? Is there a final boss? Is there a level progression? But I think it might just be getting scores. Which makes sense, because the th getting uh, collecting points is what itself makes the local difficulty higher. So it's the risk-reward of like, how many points do I want to get in this particular zone versus moving on to another zone, because I think each zone has a different difficulty level based on how many uh, points you've collected in that specific zone. So I can intentionally hang out in this one zone for a long time and keep driving up the difficulty and getting as many points as I can. Or I can move to onto a different zone, where it'll be easier, I think. But I'll have to deal with a new rule set. So I guess the question might be, are you more comfortable sticking with the same rule set? For a very long time. As the, even though things are getting tougher, or do you want to try to adapt to a new strategy? Oh god. I think I'm in trouble. Okay, not quite. Ha 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 ha
Danger, danger. There we go. You gotta be very careful. <laughs> They're sneaking up on you like that. It's just the local power up. This does something. Apparently not what I thought it would do though, because I thought it was gonna kill you, honestly. The orb of speed. Oh, maybe that means I can move twice for every... yeah. It's essentially making all of the enemies move at half speed, where they only take an action every other turn. To make me feel all super speed. Oh. Killing a slime seems to destroy the collectibles, which is obviously not good news, because that's your goal. Oh boy. Okay, yeah, the, the reds can't approach me, so I'm fine. Damn you, Blue. You've ruined that collectible forever. They do a good job of making each zone different. There's a pretty big difference between ice area and vector- uh, and, and slime area and the uh, plants area. Like, the ivy was really interesting. And then the strange one where you just kind of run a lot. I'm not sure what to think of that place. It takes the don't get boxed in by opponents thing and makes it ex pretty extreme by making it so that you also can't attack, so you just have to keep running. Someone's gonna get motion sick watching this, I think. Or maybe even playing it. Just because of the weird swimmy way that it displays. Wouldn't be the worst time to take a look at some of these uh, settings. There's no settings here. Uh, menu. <clears throat> settings. So I thought, yeah, I thought I saw some weird things here. Camera level above the plane. Oh god, this is a hell of a way to show these. Use the full three models on. Uh, I don't think that setting works, or I did something wrong. Okay, the <laughs> attempts were made. Projections of the point care model. Disc scans. Oh my god. Oh god. What have I done? How do you even tell which spaces are the adjacent ones? I figured this is where things could get scary. Is fish eye. Looks mostly similar, but just kind of further away. Oh god. Alright. Oh my god. Why is the shape around me change each time? Ah, oh, I destroyed it. I knew there was opportunities for this to get fucking weird. Collagen? But it only- it's only projected weird in one direction? Ah, oh, it goes in the opposite- it doesn't go the direction I click in. I don't like that. Formula. What? Oh god. Uh, ah, shit. No, undo. 
I... Yeah, you know, this might make it hard to play. <laughs> and, oh god, I think it's making the game run poorly, too. Uh, let's get back to something different. Band? Is this like Animal Crossing mode a little bit? I think so. Not quite. I, I, but it fucks up your controls. I think this is where you have to use WASD and so on. Because the game becomes like unplayable with mouse. Like something goes something goes really wrong with the mouse's interpretations of of where you think you're clicking. Sinusodial. Quadrant coordinates. Ah 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 antiaxial coordinates. Two point equidistant. Hello. The ball model. <laughs> Azimuth equidistant spiral ring. The Fibonacci spiral. That projects at a crazy angle. So just to try to get that spiral on screen. That's funny. What have I not tried yet? Two point hybrid? Oh, Jesus. I hate it. <laughs> oh god. Two separate globes on the screen. Good luck making sense of that. I think this entire series of settings is basically just a bunch of math jokes. So we have a hemisphere, but I can't see shit. Like, I think I'd have to rotate. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little afraid to get into that mess right now. Alright. So back where we started. I think this is where we started. So I hope that answers some questions or whatever. Oh, I died. I died by messing with it, so that, yep, I accidentally made that red uh, blue, so they surrounded me and took me out. Anyway, this has been Hyper Rogue. If you'd like to check this game out for yourself, there's a link to the Steam page in the description. Thanks for watching, like always, guys, and I'll see you next time.